Discernment is a gift of the Spirit that is desired by many, but only possessed by a few. It is an important attribute that is required to navigate this world and not fall victim to the wiles of men, because people can be quite deceitful, wolves within parading themselves to be part of the flock. It takes the Holy Spirit to be able to know who is who, to be able to distinguish the good from the bad and the ugly, and what is right from almost right. Glory to God as believers, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, and as such, we can be guided to our decisions in life without becoming prey to the predator. We are most likely to make judgments based on the things we can see physically, and as a result, we end up missing the real thing. When Samuel went to the house of Jesse to anoint one of his sons as king, he immediately assumed seeing Eliab, the firstborn son. That was the one the Lord had chosen, but God told him otherwise. He said, while men look upon the outward appearance, he looks at the heart. In the end, we see that David, who had been forgotten and abandoned in the wilderness, was the one God had in mind. He was the man God had chosen to lead his people. Take a look at the people in your life. Who are those you are trying to keep and who are you pushing away? On what criteria is your choice based? Are they physical assets such as money, beauty, connection, physique, and intelligence? Or are you looking at the inward man of the spirit? Are you considering the kind of fruits they produce as believers? Do you let the Holy Spirit of God guide you in making your choice? This is a mistake many people, especially believers, fall victim to. We make our assessment without giving heed to the voice within. And sometimes we end up pushing the right person out of our lives. The truth is that they may look it at the moment, but if God has placed them in your life, it is because they have a purpose to fulfill at the particular period in time. It could be in our families, businesses, career, or relationship, and they usually would not come in the form of what we expect. As a result, we must learn to look beyond the physical so that you will be able to assess the truth worth of a person and will not make the mistake of pushing away someone God has blessed you with. Look at the life of Abraham. When lifted his eyes from the tent door where he was sitting one evening, he saw three men and went ahead to welcome them and make them feel at home. He washed their feet and gave them food without knowing that he was entertaining angels. It was in the course of this visit that he received the specific timing for the coming of the promised child, Isaac. What would have happened if he treated them as strangers and did not attend to their needs? What would be his gain if he had pushed them away and chosen not to be disrupted at that moment? Of course, he would have missed his blessing and lost the chance of fulfilling God's purpose in his life and becoming great. He would have simply succeeded in pushing his blessing far from him. When God wants to work or do something on the earth, he would not come down from his throne or suddenly appear to you. Sometimes he does send us messages through his angels, but those are rare experiences that should not be necessarily sought after. The way God works is that he uses men to carry out his mandate here on earth. Men have always been God's method and will forever remain so, as long as the earth exists. Even when he wanted to redeem mankind, he had to come in the form of a man, lived as a man and die like a man. So if he has chosen to bless you, he will do it through a man. He will either connect you to that person or find a way of introducing that person to your life. It usually takes a keen awareness in the spirit to be able to discern that certain people have been specially and specifically handpicked by God to bring about your success and breakthrough in life. And it's not just that alone. Our basic character and attitudes also affect our relationship with people. Abraham did not suddenly become hospitable in one day. It was most likely a part of him to host strangers and open his home to them. 
So check yourself. Are you the kind of person to look down on people? Are you always in a rush to discard people once they do not fit into your checklist? This can be a common mistake, especially in terms of a romantic relationship or one that is leading to marriage. Most men and women have a checklist by which they run every individual they happen to come across in this life. And if and if we will be truthful to ourselves, we will realize that most of the things on our list are based on physical and mundane things. It is time to get rid of that checklist and pick one from God. If God is saying this is the one, stop fighting his decision and stop pushing that person from you. It might take time for you to adjust and come to terms with that person, but you can be rest assured that if it is God's blessing, then it is going to work out well in the end. We should also realize that when God blesses us, He does so without adding sorrow and stress. His gifts are good and perfect according to James 1.17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Whatever and whoever God has blessed you with, don't take for granted. It is easy to become familiar with people and not see them for who they really are. That was what happened to the people in Jesus' hometown. Even though he came from that region and that they should have been the most blessed of all the regions at the time, they allowed the cloak of familiarity to blind them from seeing Jesus for who he really is. Instead of seeing Jesus, the Savior and Redeemer, they were looking at him as the son of a carpenter, someone they grew up with and knew his background. The Bible records that Jesus could not perform many miracles there because of their unbelief. That is to say to us that dishonor is a way of pushing people away from your life. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2.17, Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. There it is, written as an instruction for us to follow. We are to honor all men irrespective of who they are. Don't be proud and begin to think of yourself better than others. Everyone is unique in their way, and each has treasures hidden within, one that cannot be assessed by mere physical evaluation. One of the ways you show honor to God is by the way you treat people he has placed in your life. If you disrespect them, then you have no regard for God as well. How do you treat your spiritual head and mentor? How is your relationship with believers around you? What about that special person that God has chosen for you to walk together in the journey of life? Do you show them the honor or do you treat them with disdain? You should come to the understanding that honor begets honor. God said in the word that he would honor those that honor him and those that do not honor him, he would lightly esteem. When God has blessed you with someone, do all you can to ensure that they stay. Don't push them away knowingly or unknowingly through your behavior. Hold on to them tightly. You never can tell. They might be the key to getting your breakthrough and reaching your promised land. God is always strategic in his planning. When there is a need, he prepares a man ahead who would be able to provide a solution to that problem. What he does is that he finds a way of introducing them to the system. These people might come in the form of our siblings or even children. They might be a colleague at work or perhaps a fellow believer with whom you worship at the same center. The important things are to be able to realize that they are God's blessings to us. Jephthah's siblings did not know that he was God's blessing to them and in ignorance pushed him away because of his background. They had no idea they were sending away the one God has ordained for their deliverance and in the end had to beg him to help them during their time of distress when the Ammonites made war against them. That is exactly what the devil is scheming for in your life. He wants to take away everything from the protection that God has put in your life and leave you open to attack. In the case of Jephthah, 
he agreed to help on the condition that he would become their head. It might not be so in your case, so don't do anything that will make them leave in the first place. Do your best to overlook their faults and flaws and choose to concentrate on the blessings they are to you. You will discover that everything works out for your good. Shalom.